Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to JKS Tech Lab. Today, I just want to show you how to install Pink Federate on a Windows server. I'm rebuilding some of my server, uh, some of my virtual lab machines, and figured I'd just record this just to kind of show you the process just in case it's something you need to do, or maybe you've joined an uh, organization that already had Pink Federate installed and you just want to see the process. So let's just go through it. The main thing you want to make sure is that you meet all of the requirements for the operating system and java specifically you know those things and as far as you know browsers and stuff you should be good so i've already installed java on this machine i use microsoft's open jdk uh, version 11 so yeah we're just gonna do the install so you just download the installer and you also want to make sure you have your license file downloaded because you'll need that to complete the, the installation so being that it's windows this is pretty much a wizard based process but i just want to show you kind of what to expect so we just run this installer and i want to say once it gets started it takes about three to five minutes so you know while it's doing some of the installation i'm not just going to make you watch that part but i want you to see all the different parts as far as like when you need to input different things or you know some of the parameters that are a part of the installation all right so here we'll click next and we're doing a standalone installation. That means the admin node and the engine and the runtime node is the same server. But if you're like in a clustered environment, those could be separate. So you can have your admin node running on one server and you can have multiple runtime engines or you can have multiple admin nodes. It just depends on how big your environment is. So we're just going to do standalone. So this one Windows server is going to handle everything. So let's go ahead and click next. Um, just, just your admin port. Again, you can change this. You can make this whatever you want. We'll just leave it at the default for this. Same on this page. If you want to change these ports, you can. Um, this is the port where applications are going to be sending authentication requests and different stuff like that. So you can leave it the same or you can change it on this one. Let's just throw something in there. Um, you can also leave that off if you want. And you can go through in the config files and update these if you need to later and change them. But we're just going to go here. Default for the installation directory, unless you need to change it, of course. And then we're going to click install. Now, this is the part where it's going to take about three to five minutes, depending on uh, your server and stuff like that. So. All right. So now we're to the part where it's it's waiting for the admin console to start up. It's already installed the services. And it took about. Oh, maybe a minute and a half, two minutes. I think it's going a little bit slower since I'm running the screen recording software right now. But, you know, this time can vary, like I said, depending on your hardware and your setup and stuff like that. But it's a really straightforward process considering all the stuff that Ping Federer does. So now we're ready. This is where we need to go to access our admin console and finish the installation. So if everything went well, you should be able to access this. All right, so just had to wait for it to start a little bit. I wait for it to get up and going. Now this is normal because the certificate that is being presented by the admin console, you know, it, it doesn't recognize it because it's self-signed, but it's fine. Um, like I said, we're just gonna go, because in a production environment, you would actually go through and, you know, create your certificate that matches your environment and all that different stuff. And most likely you probably have, uh, you know, well, an actual domain name for your server different things like that but so now we come to the terms and conditions click next and again this is what we set in the wizard so this is our base url it's the name of the server and then the port that we set this is where applications and everything is going to communicate with ping fed so we're just going to leave that the same again if you need to change this, um, you can. You can also change this in Ping Federate. But we're just going to click Next. We're not going to connect it to Ping 1 right now. You can also do that after the fact. So we're just going to click Next. And this is where you're going to need to upload your license. So I'm going to go choose my license file. So you just make sure your license information is correct in there. Click next. And then this is where you're going to set your admin uh, password. And 
we click finish and if all is well it should take you straight into your ping federate dashboard and you're pretty much good to go from there now you can go in and start configuring your connections your policies whatever it is that you want to configure so like i said it's a really straightforward process especially on windows when you're running the the actual wizard really straightforward there uh, but just wanted to kind of show it just in case you weren't familiar with it or you hadn't seen it before. Like I said, if maybe you're new and you're setting this up in a new environment or you're coming into an existing environment, you didn't get to see the process of setting this up. And you could also, like I said, we're doing standalone. If this was a clustered environment, we would run that installer on our other servers and just say, you know, this is, you know, an, an admin clustered node or a runtime cluster node or whatever it is that you're setting up. But hopefully this this helps kind of give you an idea of what it looks like to install Ping Federate on a Windows server. My VM is Windows Server um, 2019. So, um, yeah, but the process is pretty much the same as long as you're using a supported OS. So. Let me know if you got any questions. Hopefully this is pretty straightforward and gives you an idea of what to expect. Till next time, I'll see y'all later. Peace.